Hello listeners, welcome to our English program podcast Kaleidoscope. Listeners, a photograph is usually looked at but seldom looked into, said the famous American landscape photographer Ansel Adams. In our today's program, we will not just try to look into the photograph but also the man behind the lens, the photographer himself. With this, let me introduce our guest for today, Mukul Mukherjee. who is a wildlife photographer and wildlife consultant an explorer at heart mukul's drive to capture the world around him has taken him into the midst of india's most beautiful national parks and biosphere reserves where tigers roam freely through mangrove forests and saltwater swamps throughout his career his work has been published in various esteemed magazines and won prestigious awards Today in our episode we will have the honor of chatting with Mukul with various aspects of his wildlife photography the important role that photography plays in protecting wildlife his conservation work as well as what it's like to be on the wild side of nature so welcome Mukul Mukherjee to our Akashwani studio thank you so much Gaurav ji i would like to share this anecdote with our listeners i recently came across a photograph called the oath where an entire clan of elephants is seen or it appears like they are taking an oath with their trunks it was absolutely splendid that moment is so special and it would have taken so much skill and hard work to wait for that moment i really wanted to get in touch with the photographer and so here we are obviously i am talking about mukul mukherjee's photo the oath so mukul da please guide us through the moments that led to this photograph the oath let us relive those memories well uh, the oath uh, has uh, uh, covered many mileage till now and it has been showcased in many different uh, uh, platforms and it has won many prestigious awards uh, the oath was photographed at assam in manas national park when we 20 photographers were selected okay it was a, a live competition where uh, every day we were taken for a safaris okay. and you have to photograph the best moment and then the best photograph would have been awarded during the morning merry go round safari there is a watch tower called budha budi okay hmm, in manas national park hmm. where we just halted for refreshments so there when we were just having breakfast we saw herd of elephants they were just entering there okay so initially i started up uh, with my small camera then i felt that i needed a bigger lens which was also uh, because i generally i carry two cameras along with me okay hmm. so i picked up the uh, immediately i changed the camera and i picked the uh, l- longer lens and when i took the longer lens and immediately when i focused so i got the entire elephant because they might have stopped exactly at that point for maybe 1 second or 2 seconds oh and that is when <laughs> i clicked that photograph and along with me there were almost eight people but that frame became the winning photo of that event wow wow hmm. splendid so and yeah. uh, basically the moment yes and then the morning light uh, which is uh, you can also say just after the golden light right uh, which yeah. which is actually smooth and uh, everything was absolutely clicked at the time yes at the golden light at the golden light okay yeah and how did you come up with the name for that because that almost appears like an oath yeah because <laughs> initially when i so when i afterwards because i didn't get any time to do the setting also of my camera right because i simply changed the gear and simply took the you long click. lens and then just i could click only one or two because the, the right. second photo also uh everything uh, uh disappeared okay the moment disappeared <laughs> so only i think i got 1 second to f- photograph that particular frame oh after the event like after we uh, the safaris were all over then we were supposed to uh, submit our photographs so we had to submit uh, four photographs i believe in those days so uh, yeah, when i was submitting i saw uh, when i while editing i saw that all their trunks were yeah. in such a position that it it uh, resembled that they might be taking an oath because if you look at uh, yeah. elephants uh, are one of the social animals yes right because they like to be in the herd that resembled me of that the oath yeah 
Interesting. So, Mukul, actually, photography is a diverse field. Uh, like specifically, what made you choose wildlife photography? I have been always inclined towards wildlife, but it was very difficult. It is not that easy because uh, wildlife photography is very, very expensive. Right. At the first uh, go. Huh. And uh, you need a long lens you, and you require the latest technology cameras because you need fast, fast uh, shutters and all. Okay. Hmm. So uh, definitely in those days, I, I used to just wonder about wildlife photography. But never had a courage to get into wildlife photography. Okay. Uh, but I always used to lo love wildlife. When I started to photograph, when I bought my first second-hand DSLR from Delhi, and uh, I got a 70-30mm lens along with that DSLR. Okay. So I started to shoot. Uh, I cannot say it a wildlife, but yeah, I started to, to photograph the nature, the bees in the gardens. Achha. So from there it started. Okay. From the, in 2014, from uh, there, my wildlife photography started. But again, uh, I never thought of uh, that I could go for a long lens. Because having a long lens will not only... You cannot get into a wildlife photography. Because for wildlife photography, you need a thorough study. You need to go to many places. And uh, at that time, it looked very expensive for me. Right. So uh, somehow in 2016, again, I got a, a secondhand long lens, which I bought it luckily. Okay. And from there, you can say I made a level up. Okay. Uh, I leveled up my wildlife photography from there. In 2017, uh, the first uh, wildlife uh, photography trip, which I did was in Africa. Okay. So that actually, you can say that was a kickstart in right. making of my professional wildlife career. Right. And I got again indulged with the WWF in 2017 itself. Okay. So that's how my journey began as a wildlife photographer. So maybe nature has chosen me. Right. So that is why I could pursue my hobby. And then it eventually it changed into my profession. Wow. What is your favorite photograph, which uh, you would like to relive that moment again and again? We talked about the oath, but any other photographs that you feel have been that interesting? Uh, well... Generally, we always look for better photographs. Hmm. So, till now, I am not satisfied with my photography. <laughs> okay. So, I am again looking for something new oh. to photograph again. <laughs> so, I don't. I would not like to go back again. Definitely, I would like to go back to the same habitat sometime. Ah. But uh, definitely, I would like to have different frames. Wow. That's an interesting answer. So what makes a photograph special or successful? As you said that you would like to go back again and retake it. But uh, like what makes it special? Like how do you know that that's the moment? Or does it come impromptu? See, there is a saying that nature doesn't repeat. So because till now in my nine years wildlife photography career, I could never take a single photo again. Uh, because nature never repeats. Right. Maybe the light will be different. Time will be different. Okay. The season will be different. Mm. Uh, so that is uh, the most beautiful thing about nature. So whatever you can capture, you can capture it now or you cannot capture it again. It will so change. It is, it, that is the yeah. rule of uh, wildlife photography. Yes. That is the thumb rule of wildlife photography. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very, very alert. You have to be, uh, they say that a wildlife is being lucky, but I would rather say you can only be lucky if you are persistent and you are really working hard. Right. Right. Wildlife photography also requires a lot of wildlife knowledge, which I felt when I was photographing tigers in uh, central India. Okay. There I felt the need of, because at that time I was just depending upon the driver and the guide who was who, who were taking me for the merry-go-round safaris. Right. Right. Then I found that uh, that is not enough because I am just being a guinea pig, what they are showing me and I'm just photographing that. Right. So instantly after that particular trips, I think I made around 26 safaris in central India in that season. And when I came back home, I asked myself whether uh, I called this as a wildlife photography. Okay. Uh, then I got a big question mark. So then I started to look for some wildlife courses and all. Then I joined a naturalist course in Tadoba under Aniruddha Chauji sir. 
ओके चीफ नेचुरलिस्ट फॉर तडोबा टाइगर रिजर्व ओके इंटरेस्टिंगली चाउजी सर हैज बीन टू आर प्रोग्राम सो लाइक वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग पर्सन ही इज ऑल्सो सो फ्रॉम देअर माई वाइल्ड लाइफ एक्चुअल वाइल्ड लाइफ फोटोग्राफी यू कैन से इट्स स्टार्टेड सो आई बिलीव दैट टू गेट द मोमेंट कैप्चर्ड इन योर फ्रेम definitely there is lot of study behind it right hmm. you have to do the research of that particular place you have to do a research about that subject which you are going to co- uh, capture and uh, until unless you know about their behavior it is very difficult to capture them hmm so a lot of research has to be done absolutely so this is a lesson that amateur wildlife hmm. photographers uh, need wildlife to learn pho- as well yeah first i would uh, suggest amateur wildlife photographers just instead of jumping with their cameras if they at least start learning about the wildlife and they watch using a binocular ha huh, then they get into the wildlife photography thing so first observation is important observation is very much required yeah. see each and every photograph has its own story hmm right each and every photographs are unique to me yes uh even a sparrow if you take a photograph of a sparrow ha huh, it has a different story about right oh. so uh, for wildlife i never suggest anyone that you have to travel across the globe you can also capture amazing moments in your garden as well the successful part of of a photograph is all about the perfect composition the perfect lighting and the technicalities okay. but again it depends upon the viewers right. because there is again a demand from the customer and if you are able to oh mane if you are able to make it then you are through right so have there been incidents like you thought that this is a very successful photograph but it didn't work with the viewers in fact uh, many times it has happened that i thought this is not a very good photograph of mine but, but that is many people no, started like it. Uh, liking it so you never know which photo can click right uh, that is why you should always share your photos on social medias right So wildlife is an important part of your life but uh, have there been any incidents while filming that you thought you shouldn't have got so close to nature or incidents which were really dangerous for you and the other crew members as well such incidents uh, has happened with elephants but again when i was photographing a four horn antelope okay. chow singha in uh, palamo tiger reserve which is absolutely small even smaller than a deer even smaller than a spotted deer i was just filming it and suddenly out of the bloom it started attacking me oh and i had to climb the tree to save myself oh so wh- what i suggest is we should not play with wildlife right and we should keep a distance from them because uh, uh, we are in their vicinity it's not our place it is their place so we should respect that one more incident which just happened so we went inside the tiger reserve uh, during the evening hours and we so we were about to set up our trap camera okay so when we were inside the park it was almost dark and then we saw an elephant in front of us okay hmm. and uh, we started driving slowly behind it and we were also photographing the elephant but suddenly what happened the elephant from the dirt track it went to the water hole to have water we crossed the elephant and then again uh, something nudged my mind that i would like to capture the elephant having water okay so again i turned my car and then when i was going towards it almost the elephant has drunk already has drunk the water and it was already on the dirt track now this elephant was just head on so uh, the dirt track was so narrow that we cannot also turn the car okay ha huh. and uh, i try to, to put the back gear and uh, push it towards the back side but again now, nowadays the car they have their uh, signals huh. if something uh, interrupts it again prompts uh, a sound beeps yeah which was again uh, making the elephant annoyed so stop the car there but uh, we kept the engine on and our headlights were on <laughs> and uh, along with me uh, we had a gis expert from palamo tiger reserve who was sitting okay. beside me okay. he said uh, dada uh, just be calm and uh, we were almost calm and uh, he suggested that put on our windows 
so that our noise will should not go out and he said that somehow please do not honk okay uh, and we waited there patiently and calmly uh, the elephant came very close to us then it went to the side and it just rolled on the trunk to just give our car a push and at that moment i just drove the car by so that was really close when you are telling us this incident i am having goosebumps right oh. what is your photography gear like today in comparison to when you started and nowadays i am using mirrorless cameras which has 20 bust in a second okay. like you can take 20 photographs in mm. one second oh. but when i started up with my wildlife photography at that time i used to have a second hand dslr camera which i just uh, with which i just started my wildlife photography uh, it had only 3 Uh, bust in one second. Okay, so, bust is uh, three. Uh, so you can take three frames in one second. That is a bust. Yeah. Okay, okay. So now there is twenty, like with mirrorless yeah. cameras. Oh. So uh, the more number of bust you have, so you can photograph uh, more. more you action. can capture more actions. Right, right. Like what techniques or strategies do you employ to capture unique and compelling shots of wildlife? Yes uh, this is very interesting to me because uh, I would like to share one of my newest technology which I am using okay uh, when it comes to wildlife photography you will always imagine having a long lens right, right. but now I am trying to photograph the big subjects using a use using a wide angle lens getting more closer to the animals uh, capturing them from 1 feet distance or 2 feet distance or 3 feet distance wow But now, being a wildlife photographer, should I do that? No, definitely hmm. not. I cannot capture a, a capture an elephant from a three feet distance. Right. Right. So for that, I have come up with a sophisticated technology. Okay. Wherein DSLRs are being fired using a sensor, uh, which are being set up, uh, making a digital studio, like yours. Right. Oh. like a studio of yours okay but in that studio we also uh, in that studio we also set up the flashlights so and we have to do a thorough study because depending upon the behavior of depending upon the subjects right. to be captured we set up that particular studio maybe the photography clicks drop downs from uh, 20 bust in a second to one click in a whole day or oh. one click in two days or three days maybe a month okay right so so from where are you monitoring it we don't uh, we deploy it okay at the location uh -huh. where we do all the studies like the particular subject we actually do a survey there first okay and uh, we uh, have to find out which are the subjects in that area and their movements and accordingly we set up dslr trap cameras there so that when they cross or when they come closer to the, our uh, camera the sensor will pass on a signal to our uh, to the dslr camera okay. and it will start photographing oh so it's a automated process it's a, it's an automated process but there is again lot of study involved right right lot of pre planning lot of pre planning yes. So uh, how have been the results with this kind of photography? Result has been always overwhelming because mm. you are capturing a subject using a wide lens. Mm. So you are capturing the habitat as well. Hmm. And at night uh, you are able to use the flashes. You are able to capture the nocturnal part of the jungle. Right. Which is very difficult to do it uh, during the daytime. Yes. So there was this interesting photograph which I have seen in your profile uh, of a leopard, I think, and yes. it's uh, at the night time, and its only eyes are visible in that entire darkness. So yes. it is that's exciting actually. Yes, and even the bear, if you have uh, right, yes, even the bear, at, yeah, and the bear actually, the bear photograph was really strange, and in fact, I have been chasing take the photograph of a bear for around fifteen days. Oh, huh. and I tried. Uh, in many villages then i came to know that at one particular village there was only one jackfruit tree and the bear always try to come and have jackfruits from that particular tree i deliberately 
I planted the camera just under the jackfruit tree. Okay. So it came and uh, uh, the photographs were clicked. Oh. And one more thing, uh, using this particular uh, sensor-based camera, the DSLR trap camera, in Palamo Tiger Reserve, whatever has been captured has been captured after 40 years. Oh. And for the first time. Wow. There's another uh, striking feature of your photography, Mukulda, uh, that it is uh, really raw. There's minimal post-editing work. So what do you think about the culture today where it seems like post-processing and effects are more than the actual work itself? And how is it affecting the wildlife photography industry today? See, uh, on this, uh, I don't comment much because uh, if someone is, uh, it's again an art. It depends upon the photographer. <laughs> huh. It depends upon the photographer and how they want to showcase their image. Hmm. And if they are doing more of a post-processing thing, it's up to them. But according to me, I try to keep it as minimal as possible because maybe I do not know post-processing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at the same thing, at the same time, I try to keep the genuinity. Okay. I try to. Uh, because uh, I have to showcase the habitat. I have to showcase their genuine uh, habitat and their landscape. Right. The authenticity so, has the to authenticity be The authenticity of the photograph should be there. Yes. Right. So I try to keep that. Hmm. So it has been fantastic listening to you, Mukulda, about your experiences. But uh, we are coming towards the end of our interview. So lastly, what's the best photography advice that you have ever been given? And do you have any advice that you'd like to pass on to photographers who are just beginning to take an interest in wildlife photography? Well, I have been given an advice by a very renowned uh, wildlife photographer. Okay. He actually has been doing wildlife photography since around 30 years now. Wow. Uh, so he suggested me, Mukul, uh, hmm. nature never repeats. So to, it's now or never. If you have to document something today, then do it now. Right. Uh, and I would like to say the wildlife photographers, they, there is no thumb rule that you always require a long lens. Right. You can start by wildlife photography with small lens also you can start with some macro photography doing macro photography you will be more connected with the nature you will start reading the signs and signals of the nature doing macro photography right so i suggest people to start with something small and then gradually make it big take small steps and yes. then you can maybe go to a bigger canvas yes because uh, actually uh, it took almost nine long years to build up my gears so it did not happen in a day in fact in 2021 when i was excelling in my wildlife photography career mm -hmm. i took a big risk i sold all my shares oh uh, we worth rupees 10 lakhs around and i just upgraded my gears because i wanted to pursue my wildlife photography passionately and professionally because professionally you will only able to grow when you have the best gears right but to have the best gears you should be more competent to uh, use it and the, uh, the shares were only my savings in my life okay uh, so uh, yeah so in fact i sold all my savings <laughs> oh so was it successful like you are satisfied with that yeah definitely that's yeah. why i'm able to pursue my uh, right. wildlife photography to the next level so that is really interesting mukul sir uh, your journey has been inspiring. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us today. It has been exciting and enriching to talk with you on various aspects of wildlife photography. So thank you for opening up this world for me and for our listeners. Best wishes for your future projects and hoping more success comes your way and hope you keep representing us and ultimately the wildlife at international level. So thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, Gaurav. Thank you so much, Akashwani Pune. And uh, I hope to come back again. Thank yes, so definitely, much. sir. Definitely. Yes. Thank you so much.